what was my experience like at the draft? The morning of the draft, I didn't even sleep in the bed. And when I woke up, it was just like a calming over me that was like. With the first pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Cam Newton. I'm never going to have to work another day of my life. Did you like it though? Did you double tap? So today's topic is what was my experience like at the draft, right? It was in New York. It was stalemated in New York for some time. Radio Music Hall. The morning of the draft, I didn't even sleep in the bed. I slept on a couch. Like I had a suite and I was sleeping on the couch of the suite. Bed empty. And when I woke up, it was just like a calming in my life over me that was like, I'm never going to have to work another day of my life. Like literally, like I'm asleep, I open my eyes and like, my life is about to change forever. And I just remember nobody was in the room for me, with me. My family was in the same hotel and like, I just was so present in that moment. And whatever that day brought me, I knew I deserved it. I worked so hard, I sacrificed so much. I've been through so much to finally get to that day. And they had a lot of festivities around that weekend. Like you could have went to take a picture at radio, uh, music hall, and I was like, man, I ain't doing none of that shit. Like, I just want to be, you know what I'm saying? That, like that was one of the fewest times in that journey where I could just chill like hang out order room service go get something to eat you know hang out with family you know take pictures or whatever but it was on my time so when i started getting around my family that day only thing that i kept thinking was like what if i don't get picked in the top 10. but then it was a moment where it was different than any other drafts for for me because number one it was a lockout and if you ever go back and you look at the pictures, I didn't have my name on the back of my jersey because the NFL was in a lockout, for Christ's sake. Usually you look at any other person and they have like Stafford, they have Vic, they have Manning, they have this, they have that. But mine didn't have it because the NFL was in a lockout. I don't think nobody in that draft had their names on, my, on, my, um, on the back of the jerseys, but I just wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just wanted to be in that moment. I wanted to be so present. And I remember getting ready. Still didn't know if I was getting the call or not. Like, I, I remember looking at most drafts, and they knew the night before. They knew the day of. And I'm saying to myself, like, ain't nobody called me. I was making sure, like, my phone was always close to me or whatever. Still nothing. Everything, nothing. And I was so inundated with so many calls, texts, texts, calls, texts, calls. You know, the the an abundance of love, you know, people just, you know, congratulating me on the night or whatever prior to, and I was saying to myself, I'm like, yo, why the hell, are you? like, I, I, whether it was me or not, because we were loaded that draft. We had Von Miller, we had Patrick Peterson, we had JJ Watt, we had Julio Jones, we have uh, Marcel Darius, like all these guys, uh, Robert Quinn was, was, was projected, you know, high. And all these, you know, different talents, I'm saying like, bro, I just want it to be over. You know, I just want to know where I'm going to spend the next phase of my life at. So, you know, with all that being said, I remember driving to, you know, the radio music hall and I was saying like, just whatever. I was riding with my little brother, with my brothers, uh, older and younger. And it was just like, by like they, they, we have this relationship, an amazing relationship where like they can calm me, you know? And I was saying to myself, I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like this shit here, like it's kind of crazy. Like just the energy around the draft or whatever. I seen a car next to mine at a stoplight. And I'm saying to myself like, who is this over here? I didn't know who it was, it was just this, ugly ass dude and it was a loaded car like it had multiple people in there and it was this dark skinned guy 
Come to find out it was Thomas Davis. And he was like, I, I couldn't read his lips. He was like, yeah, congratulations, da 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 yeah, congratulations. And I was like, man, who the f this dude right here? Like, And then my brother, he was like, bro, that's TD, bro. That's TD. He was like, what did he say though? Like, we didn't know what he said because we was, we was in two separate cars. And I was just getting a lot of love. So, you know, anybody who saw me that weekend, it was just like, bro, congrats, man. You know what I'm saying? Good luck or whatever. And I just thought he was just saying that, but obviously he probably knew something that I didn't know. And I remember getting out on the, on the red carpet and I just hear the crowd like, <sighs> and with the projected or with one of the talents or the first pick of the draft, it could be Cam Newton and boom, I, you know, that was a whole thing. And surprisingly, surprisingly, as you would know, I never sat down. I wasn't there long at all. In the green room, like walking around, walking into getting, you know, set up. I was, I'm such a servant that I'm just making sure, like my mom was there, my dad was there. Like, I'm just trying to make sure that, that they straight. My younger brother was there. I call him my first son because it's such an age gap, there's a 10 year age gap. And I'm just making sure like he's straight, you know what I'm saying? My agents was there, my coaches was there. And I just remember looking around the whole room, I'm like, yo bro, like Julio Jones over there, like Von Miller and his family over there, Mike Pouncey. You know, we had, you know, some history, obviously we was in the same recruiting class. I'm like, damn, like all these people are there. Um, and I'm like, damn all these players and i could potentially go first mm, that was pretty cool you know just thinking back like he a person he a dude that guy's a guy he's a factor all this person and i'm thinking to myself like how many people wish that they were in this position and sure enough I didn't even have my phones. My phone just kept ringing from a block number. My phone kept ringing from a block number. I declined. I'm like, bro, who the hell calling me? Hey, man, stop playing with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this ain't the time. Cause you knowing my damn family, bro, they they got all the jokes. And Steve Drummond at the time was was there, and he was like, "Yo, answer your phone." I didn't know who the hell this was. I was like, this black dude with good ass hair, and he had glasses at the time. I was like, what the f is this weirdo? And he, he was like, yo, answer your phone. So I answered the phone, boom. And what's up, kiddo? I'm like, hello? And I was trying to guess like who it was, you know, by the uh, area code, but it was no area code, it was a block number. Yeah, hello? Hey, what's up, kiddo? I said, hello? He said, yo, hey, Cam, it's Coach Rivera. Ron Rivera, head coach of the Carolina Panthers. I was like, oh man, coach, man, what's going on? I was in front of my damn mama, so I was like, man, I really want to say, man, what the f is good? You dig what I'm saying? But I was so excited, but like my mama, I think this whole weekend, my mom and my dad found out how crazy that I am. But I was like, I answered the phone, and then I looked at them, I was like, yeah. Hey, I was trying to act like I had some sense. And I was like, bro, I was so happy. And I looked at my brothers and I'm like, yeah, bro, we did you, bro. And he gave the phone to uh, Mr. Richardson. And God rest his soul, Mr. Richardson, Cameron. I said, yes, sir. He said, well, welcome to the family. Welcome to the organization. He says, do you have any tattoos? I said, no, sir. Do you have any facial hair? I said, no, sir. Is your hair nice and trim? I said, yes, sir. Good. Let's keep it that way. I said, boom. Man, listen, you ain't got to worry about that, Mr. Richardson. And the last thing he said, <laughs> he was like, now, Cameron, you deserve it. I want you to have fun tonight. But knowing Mr. Richardson, like all the pictures like you see are like the persona of Mr. Richardson. Like you'll see like this serious ass, you know, white dude. But me and Mr. Richardson was like so close. Like we had this unbelievable relationship. And what you see on TV is completely different than what's happening actually in the back room. Like I think I was like 15 deep in a, at a eight table, an eight seat table. 
you know, I had Coach Miles on there, um, Coach Chizik, uh, George, uh, a couple of agents. I'm like, damn, what's supposed to be going on right now? You know, we just got to wait. And I get the call and boom. And with the first pick of the 2011 NFL draft, the Carolina Panthers select Cam Newton. I was like, oh, well, at that point I had already knew. So I was like, you kind of like want to be like excited, but like, like you ain't want to be like, I already knew this. I was like, man, yes. So I dapped up everybody. That's like my second time dapping up everybody because we had already knew. And I just was thinking, I'm like, damn, how far is Charlotte from Atlanta? I was saying like, is this gonna be a long like, flight? Can I drive? So like all these things are happening and it's crazy. Like one, one petty thought, one petty thought of that night that I thought, and I said, man, I know the NFL is about business. When I was walking to the stage to meet Commissioner Goodell, I had a Under Armour um, pin on, on my suit, like a lapel pin. And there was this dude, random ass dude, I don't know. He was just, he just stopped me. He's like, hey, hey, hey. I was like, yeah, what's up? And I was proceeding to get like the Carolina Panther hat with the jersey or whatever. And he was like, you got to take that Under Armour pin off. You got to take it off. And I'm like, bro, what the f He's like, no, 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 before you go, you have to take it off. I'm like, no, what I know now. I'm like, man, who, who are you? Yeah, hey, watch out, man. I got to go talk to Roger, man. <laughs> Hell out my way, man. Little bitty guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I was like, I was so like, focused, like, huh? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, you got to take that. Man, watch out, man. The first pick, man. Talk to me with some respect, little guy. You know what I mean? But I was so happy. And I just kept, st I didn't know what to say. I had seen this so many times. So many times, I seen Michael Vick get drafted. I seen all these different players get drafted. I seen the emotions. I was like, bro, I am not about to be one of these. <laughs> like, 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 I ain't going about to be one of them. I'm like, bro, let's get this so we can go party. Like, And when I mean party, I ain't talking about like no uh, Project X type stuff. Like, I wanted to celebrate with my family. I wanted to celebrate with my brothers. I wanted to celebrate with my with my aunties and everybody because it was just such a long process, right? And granted, in the back of my mind too, I'm like, is the NFL even gonna even happen this year because it was a lockout? So on stage, boom, all that happened. And boom, I just remember after that, I went into like a radio row frenzy on crack. Like it was just like, Interview here, interview here, interview here, interview here, interview there, interview here, interview here, interview there. Over in here is another interview. It was like, bro, I was back there for like 45 minutes to an hour and 30, just straight interviews with different outlets, you know, national, uh, uh, you know, radio personnel, just so many different things. I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, bro, I just, there's too many people. Like, I, I just want to be around people who I know, you know what I'm saying? I just want to chill you feel me but that that's just what you you don't see that side of the draft you know you just see dun -dun 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 -dun, and then you see like the picks in and then boom roger goodell or the the patron who's walking in who is reporting you know the pick like all that and i just was like bro i'm ready to go so after that we went to like this dinner spot and I just kept looking at like, everybody kept asking like, bro, are you all right? I was like, yeah, 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 I'm good. But I just wanted to see where everybody went. So I was the first pick. The next time I probably looked at the screen or had time to look at the screen was probably like the 25th pick. And that's how busy I was. And you know, anybody who knows the NFL draft, like the, by the time the 25th pick, that's like two hours. So I'm looking and I'm like, damn, oh snap, Von Miller went second. Damn, the, 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 the Falcons traded up to get Julio. Shit, like AJ Green, like where did, like all these people who I'm fans of and played in the same conference with, like I'm trying to see where they go, you know what I mean? And just checking in. So we, was, we went to the restaurant and you know, my brother, my older brother, he the partier. I'm like a middle between the two. Right, but I don't drink. I've never drank a day in my life. That's a fun fact. Document that.
I drink wine, but never any hard alcohol. Never smoke nothing, right? So my brother, he's just like, yeah, bro, bro, turn up, bro, bro. We in New York, bro. I already got a section, da, 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 da. I'm like, all right, bet, cool. Then my little brother, like, he would, like, it was just uh, a healthy dynamic. It was like, yeah, Chief, number one pick, Chief, and all this and that. And then when we left there, we went to like a uh, a party that I think Under Armour uh, had for me. And I remember walking in and this is when I knew my mama found out how crazy her son was. I think the DJ had made a cut like, no, I go ham, call me Cam Newton. Like that's the, they had that, like a cut like of uh, Lil Wayne had dropped my name in it. I'm like, damn, Lil Wayne said my name? Weezy ass baby? I told Drought three, drought two? The car the fuck drop my name? Like, what the fuck? Mama, I made it, you know what I mean? And they had made a mix of it. And I was just thinking to myself like, damn bro, like this is pretty cool. But tell me why they don't fuck around and brought champagne. I don't drink no damn champagne. Nobody in my circle drink champagne. Like, bro, I come from the purest home. My mama, only thing she know is church. My daddy is a preacher. My aunties, they don't drink. They, like they rowdy, but they don't drink. You feel me? But my brother, he like over there to the side, like he over there back there, like yeah, yeah, like all that. He trying to be discreet about it, but he don't know that everybody know that he already drunk as hell. And they bring us a big ass bottle of champagne, and I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? And my mom was like. Uh-uh. Like, my mom is like, she going to take everything. We going to take that. We going to save that. Like, we going to keep this as a, a memory. I said, mama, if you don't sit down somewhere. And then, like, my dad, like, he got a nickname for my mama. It's like, Slim. Slim. Man, go on. Get out the way. Let them take that champagne on back. Whatever. So, I took the champagne. And I just was thinking about, like, all the people who wish that they could be in my position. I was like, bro, I'm going to do this shit for them. I said, sir, yeah, we're going to have that champagne right here. So everybody thinking I'm going to drink the champagne. Granted, I ain't at this particular point in my life. I'm 20, 21 years old. Never drink a day in my life. Everybody thinking that I'm about to drink. So I'm like, yeah, go on and pop it open. Everybody get some glasses, whatever. We're going to make a toast. The dude popped it open. The waiter. Or the waitress, she gave everybody cups. And boy, I sit there. I like, boy! And anybody who knows black people, especially strong black queens, they don't fuck around with their hair. My mama hair got wet. And there's a picture of me celebrating, like just spraying champagne. And I was like so much, like that was the, the, climax of just hard work living in a moment happy as hell i didn't give a damn about couches i didn't give a damn about hell i didn't give a damn about none of that i just remember i got everybody who i love and everybody who loves me in this one place even though that they don't drink i'm having a good ass time and that's when my mom realized like boy this you're crazy but of course my mama don't curse so she's like Boy, my son is crazy as I don't know what, but I love him. That's my crazy, I don't know what or something, right? And my dad, well, he always in a cut somewhere, you feel me? And I was just so happy, like, where I could have cried tears of joy, and I was just thinking to myself, like, damn, bro, like, I really did it, bro. Like a kid from Atlanta, Georgia, that f***ed up, fell back on his feet, Went the hard route with Juco. Like they didn't have the transfer portal back then. Like I had to go get it out the mud. Went to Juco, right? Then had to come back on stage and still like, and I did all this in a matter of a year. So if y'all don't think that God real, I'm like, oh man, I'm like bro, I can't, bro, I felt invincible that night. Hell, I was floating for, I'm still floating, <laughs> to be honest with you. You couldn't tell me nothing then. <laughs> Try to tell me something now. <laughs> <laughs>
But that night, I remember we was back at the hotel and I remember seeing Vaughn and I was seeing a couple other uh, players and I was just like, bro, like, man, congratulations. Because I know, you know, from an athlete to another athlete, like what it was like to just be able to say like, bro, I'm a draft pick, bro. And uh, yeah, I was outside that night and I just said like that New York was good to me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Real good. Yeah. To answer the question about how was my draft experience, it was sensational, impeccable, marvelous, <laughs> lovely, splendid, ah, unexplainable. <laughs> Boy, yeah, I had a time. Boy, I had a time. Boy, it was, it felt like that. I mean, Boy, I had a time that last night. Mm. Boy, we had a time last night. <laughs> Boy, we had a time last night. But the crazy thing was I got a text from my agent uh, as we were going back to the hotel. And he was like, we got, we got to, um, we got to fly to Charlotte tomorrow. And I was like, Sh all right, set the flight up. Boom, just send me the flight details. And he was like, nah, they sending the jet for you. I said, yeah. Even some old reason to turn the hell on. Fuck, I'm flying private to Charlotte. <laughs> well, you could tell me nah. But I was just on cloud now, man. I was able to fly with my family, man. We flew to Charlotte, and I was just thinking in that time while I was driving around Charlotte, I was like, bro, this is my new home. I describe Charlotte as a very clean city that. It's like the first scene of any movie. Like, and I'm like, bro, it's so clean here. These big ass trees, the lawn neutered and manicured perfectly and the plants and this and that. And it was like, it's spring on the cusp of summer. I'm like, damn it, here's, majestic like, i can get used to this and boom that's when it started i met uh you know coach rivera marty herney at the time too and i seen mr richardson and it was you know, the rest was history but but draft night though i just feel like this i hope everybody get to experience one night like i experienced that night at draft night because it's gonna be something that you gonna always remember. And instead of keeping the energy like, ah, man, I done slipped to, to the fifth pick or I done slipped to this perk. Like, bro, if you're getting drafted anyway, bro, that's a blessing, you know what I'm saying? And one of the questions was asked from the report, I remember, cause they had put the uh, clause or um, it was a different in pay right and that was i was the first year so the, i think the year before uh matthew stafford no uh sam bradford had signed this mega deal i think it was like 70 plus million or 60 million well mine i didn't know how much i was gonna make but i was like yo but you know where i'm from but well, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, but it don't matter what they give me, bit, bro. It's going to be way more than I've ever seen in my life. Like, real talk. So stop the cap. Like, stop all that. My, I just was, I would be happy with anything. And I ended up signing for 22 mil, 22 guaranteed. And I just was like, bro, I ain't never seen as much money in my life. Like, bro. So why am I tripping? I, mean, I could put, I could buy a house for my family, my mom, my dad, my little brother, and everybody's straight. Like from Cam Newton to you, man, enjoy the hell out of that night, man, and be grateful because everybody don't get drafted and just live it up. No finger, no pinky, no thumb, no love. <laughs>